If you're at all like me, you love technology and textiles, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna focus on how to do some of this photo printing onto fabric, but we'll also make a little bag at the end. Let's get started. That's right, I will walk you through the basic steps of making the little tote bag, but I want you to focus on how great my kids look last summer in the swimming pool on this weird inflatable unicorn, of course, but how much fun we can really have with the terrific printable uh, fabric products that are out there. Now, this one I'm using is from EQ Printables. Um, there are several different manufacturers that make all of these kinds of things. As a matter of fact, what I really want you to do is don't listen to a thing I say about the instructions. I want you to make sure you really follow the instructions that come from the manufacturer, right? So at any rate, um, these ones I'm using here uh, are very nice. They are eight and a half by 11 sheets. And you can probably tell right here, they have a clear coating on the back. Now this coating that is on the back, I've seen it done in clear, I've seen it done in paper. It's a stabilizer and you need to leave it on the fabric until it has already all the way been printed on. Now the instructions that came over here from Electric Quilt Company, they actually stated that you may not necessarily want to use your best printer settings. So if you don't know anything at all about your printer, you may want to have a friend come and help you a little bit understand some of your printer settings. Um, there's not many things to do differently, but I often print photographs on a real high ink setting. But when I did that for this one, it bled just as the instructions say it, it may. So first thing I want to remind you is don't test anything on the printer fabrics, okay? I want you to test on a heavy cardstock, make sure it looks good, and then if you're getting any kind of streaking or anything like this, please reduce your print quality so it turns out beautiful just like that. Now, my instruction said peel the paper off, and then I went through a soaking and rinsing process to get the inks stabilized to the fabrics, and once that was done, it became its own piece of fabric. Now. As a matter of fact, here's one of my tested pieces. I had two printer issues because I wasn't paying much attention. And you can see I've made some notes. The best thing that you need to know about this particular brand, because not all brands are the same, this is now printed ink onto fabric. So I can take a nice hot iron and I can iron right to the top. There are other styles of products out there that are a photo transfer. It's an iron on transfer and you cannot get an iron anywhere near those. Again, it'll bleed or burn off the photo. So we're going to be making some really cool mitered corners and framework here in a second. And you can see I'm going to be doing a bunch of ironing and that's why I chose a printable fabric instead of a transfer paper. I hope that made a little bit of sense for you. Now, I have my photo prepped out and rinsed and I dried it because I had no patience with my iron, right? You think about that one, okay? And then I trimmed it down to eight inches by 10 inches and I want to put these fun little frameworks on and what they are is they're one inch strips of this fabric and I forgot to tell you this wonderful Robert Kaufman Essex linen has a fantastic, I hope you can see there's like a gold fleck. Remember I said my kids are stars so I have to have the, the gold fleck in the fabric form. So this is the Essex linen and it sews up beautifully. And I, then I also have the Kona cotton as the black on the sides. So what I'm doing is I'm adding four inches of black squares or rectangles to the ends of the gold trim pieces to make my mitered. So on a 10 inch side, I had started with eight inches of gold and then four inches of black to reduce down and get those black corners we're after. Okay, so you're gonna make yourself strips that match your sizes that you need like this. The next step I did is I went ahead, as you can see here, this is the finished side. I have top stitched over one edge with about a quarter inch seam allowance. And I've done that so that when we press these open to top stitch onto the bag, we'll have a finished edge and we don't have to deal with turning that edge underneath again. I'm ready to go ahead and mount this onto the photograph itself. And I'm gonna go right sides together and I don't wanna eyeball, I wanna know where center is. And so I'm gonna fold this where the seams meet here, and then I can look across here because I knew it was eight. One, two, three, four, that's my center point. And now I'm just gonna lay this on here, right sides together. And I'm gonna come to my sewing machine, and I actually have another little quick tip about doing mitered corners and bindings. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at a quarter inch back from the corner. So I'm pulling the piece I've already stitched into place out of the way and I'm going to slide it under my presser foot and at this moment I wish the octopus that was tattooed on the inside of my forearm was right here helping me hold stuff. <laughs> there, I need eight hands is what I'm saying. 
Now, I want to start in a quarter inch in, so I've moved now in a quarter inch from the back corner, the back corner of the photograph, and I'm going to drop my needle, and I'm going to back up a couple stitches to lock in. We're going to be working in that corner a bunch, so we really want to secure our threads. Doing a nice, dainty little quarter inch seam allowance right along the photo and that Essex linen fabric there. And now as I approach the oncoming corner, I've got this fold going, so I need to get this back out of the way. It's easier on the second than it is on the first corner, because you can see what you're doing. And then as soon as I'm a quarter inch from the very end, I'm gonna back stitch and lock it in. Now you're gonna do that to all four sides, as you can see that I've already done around my photograph, because now we're gonna top stitch those miters onto the corners there. So in order to do that, I want to iron open all of the seams now. I said iron open, I guess I should just say press back because um, I'm not actually ironing open these seams. I'm just ironing over the fabric. And you can see right in here at that cool quarter, there's that quarter inch hanging out down in there on both, all of the corners stop and start a quarter inch shy. Okay. Now what I want to do real quick is I want to make sure you can really see what I'm trying to do with the iron. So I'm going to bring this in nice and close. And we're going to go ahead and press out a couple of these corners and I'll do two on camera and then I'll do the other two and come back and we'll start talking about getting ready to make our bag. But what I'm doing here is I'm pressing this first corner going this way and then I'm taking the fabric. If you do mitered corners on your binding, it's the same move. It's going to fold backwards underneath itself so that my fabrics are technically touching. Let me just get this positioned. These are right sides together in there. Wrong sides are pointing up. And while I hold that like this, and I do one corner at a time, I'm going to press it nice and secure like that. And because it's such a small seam, I'm literally just going to top stitch it. If this was a three or four inch long mitered seam, then I would open up the seam and do it with my right sides together. Fold that back just a little bit because I could see that my pressing slipped. And I'm going to start my thread right in the corner of where the black and the black meets. And I'm sewing a diagonal, so I want to make sure I'm already set for that. I don't want to back stitch too much into the photograph. I don't want to show off that too much. And then let's make sure, and I'm sure you can't see what I'm doing because it's black on black, but I want to make sure I get that secured there, back stitch through. And then once that corner is caught, then I'm going to come over here to my cutting board and very carefully, making sure I don't cut anything I don't want to, I'm just going to trim off that outer corner. Okay, and then I'm also going to trim off the other corner, getting all of those raw edges folded up and underneath, as you can see right in there. Let's get that thread snip out of the way so you can really see it pretty. And let's go do one more side. And then, like I said, I'll finish those up and walk you through the bag. So again, we're just going to press this here first, straight. This one goes on top of itself. And then I'm catching that corner just like that. Yep. I like to keep them pinched together. As I come over to the, my sewing machine, sometimes coming from the back in helps. See that little move there? Locking that stitch in again, and I'm sewing all the way out to that corner. Locking that stitch, cutting it open. And then, of course, you could also, if you didn't want, I wonder if my little thread snippers will cut for that. Probably, probably really nice. That's also a nice little trick there, isn't it? Because then I can cut this back in here. Oh, <laughs> not strong enough for that thick spot. They're not meant for that, so why am I trying to do it? Perfect. Okay, so I've got those two done, and I'll be back in a flash with the other ones finished, and we're going to get you through that bag. 
So here we are all framed up. You can see I've got all those mitered corners done. Now I need to add the photo to the background fabric before I build the bag. If you have a photo and you want to add it to a bag, you could probably open up one of the side seams to make it easy to top stitch around like we're going to do here in a second. But because we're constructing our own bag, we're going to top stitch before we get started. And I don't think I told you, I knew that I told you this was the Essex linen, but we're going to use about three quarters of a yard of fabric for this. Right now I'm cut down to 17 inches wide but I'd also used a two inch strip like this by the 44 inch length that has been stitched together to make my handle also, right? And then I had a few of the extra little trim pieces. So that's why we need the three quarters of a yard. Now, before I even top stitch this on, I did do one step to make my life a little bit easier. And that was once I squared up my piece of fabric here, I took the selvages off the top. And then I went ahead and I double folded over and created for myself a nice seam allowance so I have no raw edges up here in the top of the bag on both sides. So those are secure. Now, as I go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna make sure I only have one layer of the fabric below me. And I'm gonna start on a black edge, but not on the corner. This way the knot will hide. And I'm gonna sew really close to the edge of the fabric if I possibly can. So I wanna lock this stitching in. And I'm gonna come over to those edges. And then I've got my needle down position in and the needle is set and now I can turn around and I can pivot and I don't have a stabilizer or anything underneath my fabric. So I just want to let the machine do the work. And I've got several little straight pins. You may have not been able to see those in the sheen of the gold. But I'm just stitching real, real close. I'm watching the edge of the gold go right through the presser foot right now. You were doing a giant giant piece like this, you might find that not only the straight pins, but something like a lapel stick or something may really help secure those edges as you go around. I'm pretty, pretty easy to control the bulk of the fabric because it's such a small photograph I'm adding here. And of course you could have also done like a really cool white and black framework instead of the gold and black framework like I've done. That would be another fun choice. Okay, so I come back to where I started from so I can lock those stitches in. And now real quickly, I'm just gonna cut this thread out of the way. I'm pulling my four pins out. I've got a magnetic pin cushion down there, so I'm just gonna throw them on top. And now we are ready to build our bag real quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm going right sides together, just like this. I'm going to start at my bottom corner and I'm gonna sew up. You could do it with French seams if you know how to do that. You can do it standard, whatever you like. Now this linen has got a little bit looser weave texture. So I'm gonna go with a little bit bigger than a quarter inch seam just to get away from that raw edge on this side. Cause they're like, what if I put a sack of potatoes in this sack? Then it could be a little heavy. So I wanna make sure it's strong. And I should point out I've been using polyester thread all day because I'm building a bag instead of a quilt. Okay, and then at the top of the bag, I wanna make sure you double backstitch a couple times to really secure that. Now, before we turn this thing right sides out, let's go ahead and do some boxed corners as well. We're gonna do a three inch box corner. And I don't know if you can see it or not over here. It gives you that nice big square, six inch panel kind of thing across the bottom. But the key is, is having this nice pressed seam like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this open and try to lay it flat. And what I'm looking and or feeling for right now is that this seam that is pressed is running along, darn it, there it is, that seam allowance we stitched. So I can feel that thread right there, and that's cool. And then I wanna take the diagonal portion of my ruler and spin it until you are seasick at home. <laughs> what am I trying to do? There it is. And then what we're gonna do here is we need to come up three inches into this. So I'm gonna slide down so that I'm one, two, three. I'm following this diagonal along the diagonal of my bag. And I'm just gonna lay that there and I'm gonna draw with a Sharpie marker or chalk or pencil, whatever. This is the inside of the bag. You're working on the inside of the bag right now. So I've made myself a little bit of a mark here. And then all we have to do 
is come over here. I lock in that corner and I sew across. Now my personal habit, this is the bottom corner of my bag. I'm gonna come over here another quarter inch basically and I'm basically making a stay stitch or a safety stitch just to hold it in. So I've got it double stitched and then I can just grab my rotary cutter, make sure that it's just the corner and then I can cut this with about a half inch or so like that and if I was doing French seams inside of the bag then I would have just left that corner right on. Okay well, let's give you an instant replay here today. I've got the sewing seam. I'm feeling for the pressed line right here. Get it lined up nice so that I can use the diagonal line of 45 degrees on my ruler. And three inches up, one, two, three. Get my diagonal looking pretty sharp. Get my Sharpie running sharp. Now, while I'm sewing this corner together, you can probably imagine how I did the handle. And as a matter of fact, because I wanna make sure you have plenty of sewing time left in your afternoon, we're just gonna talk about that. So I went right sides together on your handle, all the way down that 45, and it was a two inch cut to start with. And then I just worked for a little while to turn it right sides back out. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Let's keep our hands safe while we trim just the fabric. Okay. Now, so as we turn this wonderful bag right sides out here, you can see how nice those corners have come together and how wonderful our photograph is. And here you see that strip that I had done for the handle, right? It was pressed right sides back out and then we just need it basically cut in half. So now we take this down here and I buried the rotary cutter. So there's my roughly halfway mark. Now on my bag itself, what I did to start with was I folded under these raw edges basically by about one inch, right? That's gonna fit right in there. And then I just set it onto the bag and I stitched a square around it. And for the placement of the handles, you can see that I simply placed them on the frame photo side of the bag first and then I flipped it over and I put the handles in the exact same side on the other side and I have a decent size handle and a nice deep bag that we can work with and of course if you are into bags you know all kinds of wonderful tricks for pockets and ways to make this deeper or wider or whatever you like I just wanted a really fun and simple construction of a basic bag for you so that you would know what to do with your awesome photographs right so shouldn't date myself this way but one of the very first things I heard about quilters using computers for was trying to print their own fabrics. And so it's really fun to come full circle and be able to present the use of these really cool and definitely upgraded products that are out there where you can really do some fantastic printing of your own photos and make some great sewing projects with them. And don't forget, they're awesome gifts. So I hope you like today's tutorial right here. Make sure you're subscribed and always following along right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.